diagnosis. That the world has by now become the system that National Socialist vilification mistakenly took the lax Weimar Republic to be is evident in the pre-established harmony between institutions and those they serve. A breed of men has secretly grown up that hungers for the compulsion and restriction imposed by the absurd persistence of domination. These people, however, aided and abetted by the objective social framework, have by degrees themselves taken over the functions which ought by right against the pre-established harmony to represent dissonance, dissonance. Among the many that have been quashed is the saying, pressure produces counter-pressure. If the former increases sufficiently, the latter disappears, and society seems intent by a deathly elimination of tensions on making a noteworthy contribution to entropy. The scientific industry has its exact counterpart in the kind of minds it harnesses. They no longer need to do themselves any violence in becoming their own voluntary and zealous overseers. Even if they show themselves, outside their official capacity to be quite human and sensible beings, they are paralyzed by pathic stupidity the moment they begin to think professionally. But far from finding anything inimical in the prohibitions on thinking, the candidates, and all scientists are candidates for posts, feel relieved, because thinking burdens them with a subjective responsibility which their objective position in the productive process does not allow them to meet. They renounce it, shiver a bit, and run to join their opponents. Dislike of thinking rapidly becomes incapacity for it. People who can effortlessly discover the most sophisticated statistical objections when it is a question of sabotaging a piece of knowledge are unable to make ex cathedra the simplest predictions. They hit out at speculation and in it kill common sense. The more intelligent of them suspect the sickness of their intellectual powers, since it first appears not universally, but in the organs whose services they sell. Many wait in fear and shame for their defect to be discovered, but they all find it publicly acclaimed as a moral achievement and see themselves recognized for a scientific asceticism, which, which to them is none, but the secret contour of their weakness. Their rancor is socially rationalized with the argument, thinking is unscientific. At the same time, their mental power has, in a number of dimensions, been prodigiously increased by control mechanisms. The collective stupidity of research technicians is not simply an absence or regression of intellectual faculties, but a proliferation of the thinking faculty itself, which consumes thought with its own strength. The masochistic mal malice of young intellectuals springs from the malignance of their disease.